Weekly Wheaties 2319, Roundabouts, Google I.O., Firefox, and ChatGPT. A roundabout way of solving traffic safety. I'm fairly known to friends and family for being a pro-roundabout advocate. I don't fight it, as it's a fairly true statement, but I'd like to explain how that came to be. About the same time I started studying and researching my dissertation topic, highway safety, my hometown announced the installation of two roundabouts at each on-ramp and exit ramp of the interstate. These intersections were known to always have major traffic issues during the normal before and after work hours that would back up along the interstate for up to a mile. And I'm not exaggerating. Some didn't like the idea of traffic construction when it was already bad, and some didn't like roundabouts at all. Upon reading about many research articles in the highway safety space, it's fairly proven that a roundabout is much more safe and efficient when compared to its signaled counterpart. Now, it's also important to note that a roundabout should not be placed anywhere and everywhere. The software is developed that helps with traffic studies do a great job indicating how well one will work compared to a signaled intersection, but this doesn't always account for local issues or concerns. There are also general engineering rules or policies dictating placement. In regards to safety, as vehicles approach, they slow down, provide lower speeds in the intersection allow one way of driving, and the racing to beat a yellow light is eliminated. After installation, they may have a higher number of crashes at first, but they are only composed of small fender benders. Comparing a four-way intersection, a roundabout has eight critical points of conflict compared to 32. Over time, the total number of crashes diminishes and fatalities and serious injuries are all but gone. So what helps to navigate a roundabout safely? First, slow down while approaching the roundabout and read the signs. They tell you what lane allows you to travel to where you may want to go. The arrows painted in the lanes mirror the signs too. There's also a yield sign. That means yield to vehicles already in the roundabout. It doesn't mean you have to stop, but you may need to. Once in the roundabout, stay in your lane. If you're in the wrong lane, follow where it leads and turn around when safe. Lastly, do not stop in the roundabout. Just like anything, practice helps. And since they may be new, it's okay to not be fully familiar with them. Also, speed limits are generally fairly low in roundabouts, and going slower isn't illegal. For a little bit of fun, check out the Kittleson Roundabout database to see where roundabouts have been installed. In case you missed it, Google I.O., Last week, Google held their annual Google I.O. experience where they announced software and hardware updates and developments, including a new Pixel tablet that turns into a Google Home when docked. There are tons of new things surrounding Google Search and everything AI text and image you can imagine. They even teamed up with Apple to publish a new industry standard outlining how unknown tracker alerts will work all across smartphones, keeping you safe if someone placed a tracker on or near your person. To read more about tracking and its importance, visit Gizmodo. In case you missed it, Firefox to replace Google with Bing. As reported a few newsletters back, Samsung was looking to replace Google with Bing on their phones. As Google's contracts for search become close to renewing, Microsoft is doing all they can updating Bing to show how it can compete. Firefox is now one of the next potential customers on their radar. The search, or AI wars, are heating up like it's 2012 with the Bing It On challenge. Around the 3 minute 31 second mark of the Google I.O. recap video, you can see something not really talked about in regard to AI and search. As generative AI chatbots take the place of search results, advertising and SEO will look drastically different in the coming months. These conversational style responses take the place of the top few search results, many times paid. The good news for users is you may not see as many advertisements, at least from what we can tell. However, we don't know where this will lead, and businesses may be forced to adopt to new styles of advertising with search bots. Time will tell. Pick of the week, ChatGPT. In case you've been living under a rock, last December OpenAI released a public-facing chatbot known as ChatGPT. 
Since then, the tech world has been blowing up integrating AI into everything they can think of. Individuals are even sharing their creations, including an AI-generated Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Now, you can have the power of ChatGPT in your pocket. An iOS app was released, with an Android version coming soon. As of writing, there is still a free plan available, with a $20 a month subscription for added features. Download ChatGPT on the App Store. Weekly Wheaties is a reader-supported publication. To receive new posts and support my work, consider becoming a free or paid subscriber. Links for the above-mentioned items are available at weeklyweedies.com.